Uh, strikes against the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front are increasing and so is the humanitarian cost. After 11 months of conflict in Ethiopia's Tigray region, millions of people are displaced and nearly half a million are facing family-like conditions. So how can aid agencies ease the crisis? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbarra. It's been described as the world's worst hunger crisis in a decade. And it's feared the situation in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray will become even more bleak. The UN has suspended all humanitarian flights to the region's capital, Mekali. That's after an Ethiopian government airstrike forced a UN aid flight to abort a landing in midair. Federal forces have carried out several raids on the city since Monday, targeting what they say is a base in Mekali, that's used as a training site by Tigray rebels. It's part of an offensive by Ethiopian government to push back the fighters. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF, has taken back large parts of the region from government forces in recent months. It's also seized territory in the neighboring Amhara region. The government and allied armed groups are trying to recover those areas. Both sides of the conflict are accused of committing atrocities. Ethiopian federal government forces and Tigray rebels have been fighting for almost a year. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed sent troops to the region in November after accusing the TPLF fighters of attacking a military base. The TPLF has long dominated Ethiopian politics, but has been at odds with Prime Minister Abiy over reforms. The conflict has killed thousands of people and displaced more than two million. It's also affected Abiy's relations with the US. That's a major source of aid to Ethiopia. The government's relationship with the UN also remains tense. Last month, seven humanitarian officials were expelled accused of meddling with its affairs and sympathizing with the rebels. The UN has accused the Ethiopian government of imposing what it called a de facto humanitarian blockade on the region. The government says officials have inflated the scale of the crisis. Almost half a million people in Tigray are estimated to be facing famine-like conditions. The UN says just 1% of 5 million people in urgent need of aid, received some form of food supplies in the first two weeks of October. The ongoing airstrikes in Tigray have halted deliveries of much needed food and medicine to the area. Let's bring in our guests from Addis Ababa. Niamin Zeleki, member of the Global Ethiopian Advocates Nexus. Out of Nairobi is William Davison, senior Ethiopia analyst at the International Crisis Group. And Jan Abing, professor of politics and governance in Africa at Leiden University. Thank you for joining us. Niamin, so there's a humanitarian situation in the Tigray region. The situation is getting worse. And the, at the time when the UN agencies were trying to deliver much-needed help to the people there, the government steps up its military campaign. How do you see the developments on the ground? Well, uh, I, I think uh, that line of question has uh, loaded the false uh, narratives. Mm -hmm. The Ethiopian government has done its level best to make sure that the Tigrayan people get humanitarian aid. That's why it, it, it allowed many international NGOs, including the many, the various UN agencies to operate integrate freely. So the, 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 the actual culprit for the, the restricted aid being delivered, humanitarian aid being delivered in Tigray is the belligerence of the TPLF which claims to represent the Tigrayan people. It has invaded uh, lands in Amara and Afar. Therefore, it has hampered the uh, proper delivery of humanitarian aid uh, to Tigrayan people. Mm -hmm. Now, 
having said that, even as we speak, aid has reached the Tigran people because the Ethiopian government has allowed both flights, UN flights to Makale, and also uh, hundreds of trucks. By the way, four, 428 trucks mm -hmm. are missing because the TPLF is using these trucks to wage the war in Afar and Amara regions. You know, that's so what this narrative is... To be uh, able to establish facts on the ground, this is why sometimes you need to have third independent parties operating on the ground. William, the government was informed of the UN flight and the airstrike took place, forcing the plane to uh, return to the, uh, to the capital, to Addis uh, Ababa, uh, leaving many to wonder that this could be an attempt by the government to further deter or prevent aid from being delivered to those places. Well, I mean, that's the, you know, one interpretation of events. I mean, it's, it's hard for, for me to know exactly what caused that you know, lack of communication. Um, but, I mean, with regards to the overall situation mm -hmm. here, um, you know, the, the phase of the, of the war we are in is that in June, um, the Tigray forces' resistance essentially forced a withdrawal by the Federal Army from Tigray. Um, now, two weeks later, the Tigray forces went on the offensive. Um, and that was partly because of what they saw as a renewed blockade on Tigray. There was a blockade at the beginning of the war. That means no trade, no aid, and vital services, telecommunications, banking, electricity, were cut off by the federal government. So the Tigray forces went on the offensive to overcome that blockade. They were also trying to weaken the federal military and allies so they no longer presented a threat to Tigray. And they were also trying to reclaim territory lost to Amhara region at the beginning of the war. That is the phase of the war we are in. Um, and there is no doubt that the federal government is placing severe constraints on aid to Tigray, um, partly to try and maintain this effort to, to pacify and force the submission of Tigray. The federal government is also worried about aid diversion um, to the rebels. They are worried about fuel trucks going in, which are vital for the humanitarian operations, which mm -hmm. could also be used for the armed rebellion. Now, that is the reason why there is such a critical humanitarian situation inside Tigray. But, of course, people are also suffering outside of Tigray, in the areas in Amhara and Afar region where the Tigray forces have gone on the offensive to try and achieve those stated objectives. So, Jan, this is a critical situation from a human humanitarian perspective, both in the Tigray region and also neighbouring Amhara, where the uh, TPLF has managed to expand its military presence over there. And this was a moment where the UN was delivering two, uh, was sending two flights a week to deliver aid to the region. Is the government trying to further step up its military campaign to take over uh, the Tigray region, or is it trying to send a political message to the TP TPLF? Uh, both, but the main thing is that they want to uh, get the uh, Tigray uh, forces out of the Amhara and Afa regions, which, as William says, have been invaded after the unilateral ceasefire of, for, of 28 June. Uh, the, the TPLF had no real business to go to these areas, except for expanding the war indefinitely and see what it will bring them. Uh, you know, and uh, it has not brought them anything except more misery for both the Amhara and Afa population, as well as their own population. Because in this war situation, of course, all kinds of aid uh, transports, convoys to any region in, in, in the fighting line is, che is checked in, in terms of security and, and smuggling and so forth, which has ha hit, of course, the, uh, the, the Tigray region in dire need of food aid, but also the, the Amhara regions. So we have come to the point that we don't know what the end game of the TPLF is. What, what, what do they want? I think uh, I agree with both uh, my previous speakers that the TPLF is here the, uh, the agent which has totally unnecessarily aggravated and uh, dramatized this conflict in a, in a manner which, which, which serves no political, military or humanitarian purpose. Yeah, but then, uh, let me go to Niamin. The uh, Prime Minister, uh, Abiy Ahmed, has said repeatedly 
that this was going to be a short trip to take over the territory and defeat the TPLF. That didn't happen. The, 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 the two Grahians are saying that the government is not genuine about a political settlement. So we are at a point where everybody is saying that why are all the parties coming together to negotiate a political settlement? Because uh, the TPLF is uh, using all kinds of tricks and tactics and it's uh, hoodwinking the international community about its intentions. Now, the political agenda of the TPLF is to overthrow the legitimate and elected government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. They want to reimpose return to power and minority ethnic hegemony, which they enjoyed undue privilege and undue power for 27 years. They would not stop. Their spokespeople, their leaders, have repeatedly said in the open public domain that they would come and take over Addis Ababa, the capital city. They would, if not, they would dismantle Ethiopia. This is 46 years of project of the TPLF and the Tigran elite associated with the TPLF. If they cannot rule Ethiopia, they have to dismantle Ethiopia. So all other talk about peaceful negotiation is just hoodwinking the international community mm -hmm. and trying to get allies among the international community. But William, Their intention is clear, and I see your point. clear and clear. So, William, the international community has, over the last few months, stepped up its uh, uh, criticism of the Abiy Ahmed government, saying that it's about time to listen to the uh, concerns of the Ethiopian people, particularly the Tigrayans, that it's about time to start a, a reconciliation. But on one hand, you have the governments very skeptical of the TPLF. On the other hand, you have the uh, Tigrayans saying that the government is using unity to just dismantle and bring about a more centralized form of governments under uh, Abiy Ahmed. Well, I mean, undoubtedly, there's you know, important political disputes, including the, the structure of the, of the state that, that underlie this, this civil war. But, you know, a civil war is, is what it is. This has been a power struggle between the federal um, government and the Tigray regional government. Now, right from the outset of the war, uh, myself, International Crisis Group, and many others were concerned about the level of resistance, including armed resistance, that would be. Um, by Tigray region, its leadership, its people, to this effort to um, impose upon them in what was already a, a, you know, a struggle, a political struggle over autonomy. Well, we're 11 months into the war, and what are the current dynamics of it? The Tigray forces have pushed out the Eritrean and Ethiopian armies from most of Tigray. And in response to the fact that they still um, see some of their territory occupied by Amhara region, the federal government is still not providing critical services to Tigray. Um, and there is still a blockade. They have gone on the offensive. That occurred in July. We are now in late October. The Tigray forces are moving steadily through eastern Amhara and increasing the pressure on the federal government. So we are seeing a civil war which is continuing because there was no easy, quick victory for the federal government as promoted by the likes of Niamin and Yan. This is why the, the, there is the call for negotiations. I don't think anybody is under the illusions that the Tigray forces, the Tigray leadership, is not looking to assert its control and to install a government in Addis Ababa which will cooperate with Tigray, restore those services, focus on humanitarian relief, respect Tigray's autonomy. That's obviously true. Whether Niamen is correct that the TPLF is looking to establish its hegemony mm -hmm. or dismember Ethiopia is another matter entirely. But it is quite obvious to observers of this war that it is so serious, so destructive, the trajectory is so negative, that it is absolutely imperative that all sides embrace negotiations and focus on humanitarian relief and try and settle their political troubles at the negotiating table, not through military force. Ian, the international community has been critical of the uh, government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, particularly about reports of uh, atrocities committed in the uh, Tigray uh, region. Don't you see Abiy Ahmed now left with very few options because the presence of Eritre Eritrean forces operating in Tigray uh, have left some mixed no, messages no, no, no. for the no, no. people? Not at all. The question assumes the wrong focus. 
The focus should not be on the past uh, atrocities which may or may not have occurred in the first few months of the war, either by Eritrean forces or by Ethiopian forces, mm -hmm. which were, by the way, being persecuted, by being persecuted and indicted by the Ethiopian Attorney General. Many dozens of cases against soldiers were already underway. Mm -hmm. The focus should be on the, the hundred times more massive civilian uh, uh, slaughters and, and, and uh, human rights abuses which have been perpetrated by the TPLF in the Amhara and Afar regions. If you look at the evidence, it is, you know, even for us uh, seasoned uh, Ethiopia, what, it is totally shocking. There the focus should be. Abiy Ahmed, if he gives in to this uh, process of so-called negotiation with a, a force which has shown not to be serious about any negotiation, about any talk, he will quickly lose support in, in the country and the, the, the people will turn against him. He has the option will be to militarily degrade the TPLF as they deserve because they have been expanding the conflict in totally irresponsible and reckless manner, and to to gradually uh, you know have the leadership, the political leadership, what is left of it, very low quality leadership by the way, as well as the military leadership of the TPLF, have them arrested and put to, to trial in, in 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 federal courts. There's no other way. I mean, you cannot, you cannot look the statements given out by TPLF spokespersons about negotiations, political solutions. It's all wind. It's nothing. It means nothing to them if this only a strategy to win time. I'm very sorry. I've studied this for, for extremely uh, long time and in, in great detail. There can be no hope put on the current leadership of the TPLF. And we don't know really how much support they have from the Tigrayan population. A lot, of course, but not mm -hmm. all. And also outside Tigray, there are many who don't support them. But we, you cannot work with them. It's, it's impossible. Unless there is an alternative civil or political force which claims to represent and can represent the Tigrayans in a better and more constructive way, there will be no progress with the, the TPLF people. I'm sorry. That, that's how it is. Well, uh, Niamin, the, in, the Americans, the Europeans, the UN, the African Union have been saying the same message again and again. That it's about time for Prime Minister Abi Ahmed to understand that he cannot conduct the, uh, the issue of uh, Tigray region the way he is doing. That it's about time to talk politically to the TPLF to solve the problem. That is not happening anytime soon. Thank you. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, Professor Abney Kirjan. Uh, you know, uh, at the same time, Mr. Davidson was talking, really repeating the false narratives of the TPLF. And with all due respect, he and his team are no longer credible. Since the start of this conflict, they have peddled false narratives. For example, he talks about blockade. After, after the withdrawal of federal forces from Tigray, the, there was no blockade. The Ethiopian government was spending billions of burr in Tigray to build the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, any government wars its sold would protect the security and safety of the countries, its sovereignty, and also the security of its people. Mm -hmm. After the unilateral ceasefire, what has happened, which Davidson glosses over, the TPLF forces invaded wide swath of territory in both Afar and Amar, committed atrocities, massacres in Kobo 600, in uh, Chena over 200. Just a few days ago in Wichali, 30, over 30 civilians were killed. Thousands have been massacred, over a million displaced, thousands of women raped. These people wantonly and willfully destroy even public properties like hospitals and schools. Mm -hmm. Their forces have killed animals, not only human beings, massacred animals. This has not been highlighted by international mainstream media. These are the facts. Now, how could any government engage in reconciliation or negotiation when 4 million of its citizens are under chokehold of the TPLF brutal quasi-Nazi leadership, which is delusional about itself, about its exceptionalism, unless it controls Ethiopia, dominates Ethiopia, it wants to dismantle Ethiopia. These are statements in the public domain on media told by Geta Chauretta, Adhan Gabratensai, okay. and the chairman of the TPLF, which Davidson never mentions, never cares to investigate or highlight or even speak about. He talks about always the Ethiopian government. Okay. Never hold the TPLF 
William, accountable and I see your point. even to starting the war to come back to power. William, the, so, so, so the government, the, the government yes. blames so the, question, the government. Please, I, I, gave you, I, question, I gave you, I gave you enough time. Answer question. We cannot negotiate when four million people are under the yoke of TPLF's tyranny in Afar and Amara. Okay. And the government, with that, the Ethiopian people will rebel. William, the government has been blaming the TPLF for trying to dismantle the unity of the government. The TPLF and the Tigrayans at the same time are saying that. The big problem is Abiy trying to dismantle the very notion of a unified uh, Ethiopia by trying to further just consolidate power uh, uh, under, uh, under his control. Yeah, I mean, sure, as, as, as addressed, you know, there is, there is absolutely core political ideological disputes. Um, it's, a, it's a power struggle, but it's a power struggle where there is this ideological um, contest over the nature of the Ethiopian state battle for, you know, supremacy or power, the, the right balance of power between the region and the federal government. No, no, no doubt about it. But I think it's important, you know, to speak to Nehman's concerns. Um, you know, if we, look, if, we, if we listen to the, the list of atrocities that, that Nehman made, of course, you know, we could have just said that these were Eritrean troops, Ethiopian troops and Amhara forces committing those very atrocities against Tigrayan civilians in the first phase of this war. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when a full accounting is done of the violence here, we will find that actually, you know, considerable more harm was exacted against civilians in Tigray than has occurred outside. But that is, of course, not to say that the Tigray leadership is not culpable for mistakes and, and for overseeing forces that have committed atrocities. Indeed, they basically admitted as such, you know, the war is now concentrated in Amhara and Afar regions. Um, all of the, you know, this Western media who are apparently, you know, in a conspiracy with the TPLF, they have been consistently reporting on the very atrocities that Nehman mentions in Chenna, in Cobo. So there's all sorts of allegations of looting, shelling of residential areas and executions. The point I'm trying to get at here mm -hmm. is that if you take the uncompromising approaches of Yan, who wants to tell the Tigrayan people, you know, what their leadership is, or Nehemin, who just refuses to acknowledge any possibility of any sort of political process here. That is what is resulting in the civil war that's been ongoing since mm -hmm. November. We are, we are 11 months into the civil war. The Tigray forces are no longer contained to some rural mountainous um, you know, hideouts in Tigray. They are on the march through eastern Amhara. They are pressuring Kombolcha and Desi cities as we speak. They are going to maintain that pressure on the Amhara government, on the federal government, and try and force the federal government into negotiations. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anyone wants to see what will happen if the Tigray forces get to Addis Ababa okay. and try and take power there. Instead, right. what everyone wants to see is an acknowledgement of the severity of the situation and a recourse to negotiations, despite the political disagreements, the bitter right. political disagreements that are this war. Yen, we're talking about a, a, a critical moment for all the parties, particularly for Prime Minister, because he has this standoff with Sudan and Egypt over the dam that is it, that Ethiopia is building on the Blue Nile. You have the unrest in Oromia. You have now the conflict in the Tigray. Could this be an opportunity for the, all the parties to reconsider a new political order for the for the future of the Ethiopia? Uh, yeah, in principle, yes, but that, it won't happen because uh, we have a federal order and I have not heard Abi Ahmed say that he wants to dismantle this federal order. If we talk about the Tigray conflict as uh, the cause which we are now all reflecting upon, Tigray, before the war started, was the most independent regional state in all of Ethiopia. They had everything they wanted in terms of autonomy, budget and so forth. Uh, disagreements about the elections and about other things led to the, to the conflict. But uh, Abiy Ahmed is not going to go uh, change the federal order as uh, some people may, may uh, wish and uh, also from uh, very nationalist people. They will, when the new parliament opens, they will maybe reconsider certain aspects of the constitution and so forth. But uh, the federal order will remain intact. Mm -hmm. I, by the way, I find discussion sometimes a bit disturbing and uh, I'm, I stand not. I, I don't accept to be accused by ha having a, an uncompromising attitude and fueling the fu well, civil war. Know. I find that uh, find that totally unacceptable. This, this is the remark whole... of, of the previous speaker. I, I, this well, is not, not acceptable. Well, I remind you that uh, I, I no, wish, the idea of, of... I, I wish we had time to continue this conversation about 
the conflict in the Tigray region, but unfortunately we're running out of time. But in the meantime, Jan Abing, William Davison and Nia Zirike, I really appreciate your time and your insight and looking forward to talking to you in the near future about the story which continues to unfold in Ethiopia. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com, for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim Ahlbara and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.